Do you want to know how to make a Minecraft server with plugins? Well, this is the video for you. We're going to show you exactly how to add plugins to a Minecraft server. But first, I do want to mention that this is not a 24-hour server. It's only going to be up and running when your computer is up and running. Because of that, you also need a really good computer in order to run a Minecraft server. It's pretty resource intensive, and while running plugins is less intensive than mods, you still need a good CPU and a decent amount of RAM in order to run your server and play Minecraft at the same time. Lastly, this is on your own internet connection as well, meaning that it is meant for only your friends, your family, people that you trust. Anyone who gets the IP address of this server that we make in this video will be able to see where you live down to your latitude and longitude coordinates, as well as DDoS you, which basically means just hit your internet offline, make it really slow, things like that. So it's super important that you only give this server out to people you trust. But what if you want a 24-hour server? What if you don't want to have to worry about your computer and whether it's good enough to run a Minecraft server? Or what if you just want security and not have to worry about DDoS protection? and all of that. Well, that's where our company, Simple Game Hosting, comes in. Go to the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash simple to start your very own 24-hour DDoS-protected Minecraft server for you and your friends. You can easily add plugins to your server, and if you have any issues along the way, there's expert live chat support there to help you out. Plus, on top of all of that, we've got easy mod and mod pack installation if you'd rather use those instead of plugins. So, no matter what you want to do for your Minecraft server, Simple Game Hosting is the perfect place to do it. So, go check out Simple Game Hosting at the first link in the description down below the breakdown.xyz slash simple and start your Minecraft server the simple way. Nevertheless, what if you don't want to use Simple Game Hosting, you want to start a server on your own computer? Well, first things first, you want to go here. This is the second link in the description down below, and once you're here, scroll down and click the download paper MC button. Paper is the Minecraft server software that allows you to use plugins on your server. Another popular one is Purpur. It's a fork of paper. It does not matter which one you use. Just for this video, we're using paper, but Purpur is acceptable and 100% okay to use as well. Once you click that download button, it will take you here where you want to go ahead and click on the paper download. Finally, you want to make sure it is for version 1.20.4 and then click on paper here and it will start downloading. If you do want an older version of paper, you can click on build explore here and find all of the versions over on the left. But as you can see in the top right, paper is downloaded. You may need to keep or save this file, but it's 100% safe to do that. At this point, I do want to mention you're also going to need Java and you may need to run the jar fix. No matter what, you're probably going to need Java 17. Java 17 is required for Minecraft servers. And of course, we're starting a plugin server here. So you want to make sure that you get Java if you don't have it already. If later on you can't start the server with the run.bat file we create, that sounds like gibberish right now, I know, but we're going to cover it later. That's because you need Java. You may also need to run the jar fix. That's going to take all the jar files and link them back to your computer. But first, get Java, then get the jar fix if you need it. Lastly, you're probably going to want to get some plugins. We will come back here once the server is started to get our plugins. But as you can see, we have a link in the description down below, of course, with 15 amazing Minecraft plugins that truly is great for any Minecraft server. Nevertheless, we can now go ahead and minimize our browser. And what we want to do is find that paper file we downloaded. Now for me, I know that's going to be in my downloads folder here. And we can drag and drop this to our desktop. It's not going to stay there long because as soon as we get it on our desktop, we actually want to right click and create a new folder. You can title that folder whatever you want, but I'm going to title it simplegamehosting.com because that's the easiest way to make a paper server. And then we want to go ahead and drag and drop paper into the folder that we created. Now we want to open up this folder and in here we have this paper.js jar file. If yours doesn't have .jar, it's actually kind of important that it does, but it's just because you need to change one quick setting. Come up here to view at the top of the file explorer and then click on file name extensions. As you can see, I don't have it selected. So if we go ahead and check it now, boom, there is the .jar appearing because file name extensions is checked. Nevertheless, at this point, we're going to go ahead and right click on this file, click on rename and rename it from paper and a bunch of numbers and all that to just simply paper. It should be paper.jar right like so. Then what we want to do is right click and create a new text document. Open up this new text document and then go to the description down below because there you will have this. What is this? Well, this is different codes corresponding to how much RAM you want your server to have. Two gigabytes, four gigabytes. I would actually recommend at least four to six gigabytes for most plugin servers. But if you're just wanting to test this out, just start the server, you can always add more RAM later. So you could start with two gigabytes, but we'll go ahead and go with four here. So go ahead and select that, right click and copy. And again, this is in the description where you'll be copying it from. Then come over to the new text document and paste. 
You want to make sure that this starts with Java with nothing before it, ends with pause with nothing after it. Then go ahead and click File, Save As, and then you want to save this as simply run.bat, run.bat. Then you want to change the save type as to all files. So again, run.bat is the file name, save type as all files, and click save. Now you'll have this brand new Windows batch file called run.bat. As I said earlier, if when you double click on this, it doesn't work, it doesn't generate anything, like when I double click on it, you'll see here, it's going to generate a cache, generate some files and stuff. If yours doesn't do that, you need to go get Java, or you need to make sure that the paper.jar is named paper.jar. So the fix is either Java or renaming that if downloading Java doesn't work. Nevertheless, you can see this actually failed though. As you can see, failed to load eula.txt, you need to agree to it. So go ahead and press any key to continue. And now we have this eola.txt file. Go ahead and double click on that to open it. And we want to change this from eula equals false to eula equals true, T-R-U-E, exactly like that, assuming you agree to the Minecraft eula, which we do. Then go ahead and click file, save. And now when we double click on this run.bat file, your server is started and you can actually join it. So I'm gonna go ahead, launch up Minecraft 1.20.4 and join this server just to show you that it's joinable. You should also probably go ahead and do this because it's nice to be able to join your server. At this point, your friends can't join. We're gonna show you how they can join, but you can join the server. Let's do that real fast. So here we are, we have Minecraft open and our server is open over here. How do you join? What's the server IP address for this? Well, first let's go to multiplayer and then we wanna go ahead and add a server. Now the server name for this can be anything. I'm gonna name it local connection because it's the local connection to your server. You are the only person that can join your server using this IP address. What IP address? Well, local host is the IP, all one word exactly like that. Now, when we go ahead and click done, we will see that it will connect right like so, and we have the local connection here. If we double click on it, we'll see us join in on the left-hand side. There we go. Now, we've proven that we can join this server, but like I said, at this point, your friends can't join it. But you wanna know how this relates to adding plugins. Well, now, if we go back to our main server directory here, this is where our paper.jar file is and run.bat file, we have this plugins folder. To add plugins, just simply download them from the description down below, and and install them. You can also download plugins from other locations, but I would recommend getting them from Spigot or from the Bucket website here as well as Modern. Those are the three most popular places to download plugins. Let's go ahead and download Essentials real quick. So we go ahead and click Download here. It will take us to the download page for the Essentials plugin, where we want to make sure that we are downloading Essentials X. That's required. And then you can also download any of these other add-ons. We'll go ahead and grab Essentials Chat and Spawn. Now, these have downloaded. You may need to keep or save them, and that's true with any plugin. Plugin. As long as you're downloading it from a trusted source, you're good to go. Now, these are going to be in the downloads folder here. Let's go ahead and move them from the downloads folder into the plugins folder. Boom. That's how easy it is to install them, except you will need to stop and restart the server for them to activate. But you're going to need to do that no matter what if you want your friends to join. So let's go ahead and do that. To properly stop a Minecraft server, always come over here and type stop right like so, and it will close the server out, making sure everything is saved. Then press any key to continue. And now if we were to start the server again, these files would activate, right? The plugins would activate and we'll know that because they will generate some folders when they activate. We can also once the server is started, there we go, we see Essentials has been started. We can come over here to Plugins, and we can type in Plugins as our command over here in the console, hit Enter, and we see all three of those plugins are green, meaning they're working. So that's another way to do that. But anyway, how do your friends join your server? Well, stop your server, and now we need to port forward. I'm going to go over all of that in depth in this video, and the first step of port forwarding is, of course, getting your IPv4 address and your default gateway. So let's go ahead and do that. To do it, you wanna go up to the start menu and then you wanna type in CMD. That'll pull up the command prompt here, open that. And then in the command prompt, what you wanna do is type IP C-O-N-F-I-G. IP config exactly like that and hit enter. You're gonna get a bunch of different numbers here. What we wanna do is go ahead and get our IPv4 address and our default gateway. I'm gonna go ahead and make note of these in notepad and it's important that you get the correct default gateway by the way. So let's go ahead and grab our IPv4 first, which in my case is 192.168.1.2. And then for our default gateway, we actually don't want the one that's directly next to this. As you can see, there's one that's numbers and letters here and it's just a lot. We want the one that's under that, right? So it's on this second line under this one that's very long and honestly hard to copy. What we want this is this simple one here and it's 192.168.1.1. 
I'm gonna go ahead and copy that, right? Because the next step is going to this in a web browser. So open up your web browser and up at the top in a brand new tab where you would normally type simplegamehosting.com, thebreakdown.xyz, youtube.com, go ahead and paste your default gateway. Then you wanna to go to that address and it's gonna open some sort of a login box. Now, most likely it's gonna look completely different from mine. Mine just popped in from the top. Yours could be a, you know, in the center, it could be in like a GUI, a GUI interface to where it's a nice pretty login box, but you're gonna have some sort of a login box. What do you enter here? Well, it's not your Wi-Fi password. It's specifically a username and password for your router. And in the description down below, we have this. This is a complete guide on how to find your router's password. It goes over different methods. Start with method one all the way down to method five to find your router's username and password. Once you have it, come back here and enter it in. I'm gonna do that and I will meet you after I've logged in to my router. So here we are logged into my router. Now, Every router is gonna be different with port forwarding. I'm gonna give you the common terms and things to look for when it comes to port forwarding, but again, every router is different. So we have a link in the description down below on how to port forward on any router. And specifically this video up here at the top goes through all those popular routers that are out there today, such as Netgear, Linksys, Cisco, Charter, Spectrum, and Verizon. Depending on which one you have, they're all in that video. And even if your specific router isn't in that video, it's still worth watching because a lot of the terms and things are the same across all routers. Even the software is the same. For example, a router may be using Cisco software, but be branded something else. So it's important that you watch that. Watch through everything, 2x speed, something like that, to just pick up the common terms. I'm also though gonna be giving you common terms as I port forward. Now for me, it's gonna be an advanced, it's gonna be in advanced again, and then port forwarding slash port triggering. Now for you, it could be in advanced, it could be in administration, it could be in security, it could be in apps and gaming, it could be in NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding, or NAT gaming, NAT gaming. It could be in apps and gaming, I think I already said that, or gaming and apps. It could be in your security tab, your firewall tab, or again, in advanced administration, security, something like that. For me, it was an advanced and then advanced again, and then port forwarding slash port triggering. It could also be called a single port forwarding. Don't be afraid to click around your router and find port forwarding. And once you find it, you're going to have an option to either add a port forward like I do, or you're going to have a big long list of just empty boxes. And if that's the case, start with the first one. Once you add a port forward though, we're going to need to enter some information. Luckily, everything's gonna be generally the same with this. And of course, I'm gonna be giving you common terms it could be. So for the service name or ID or name, basically what is this for? This is for a Minecraft. For the protocol, we wanna do TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or both. It could literally be the word both. You wanna make sure that both of those are selected. For anything involving the word port, P-O-R-T, external port, internal port, first port, second port, entry port, exit port, inside port, outside port. Doesn't matter what it says. Anything involving the word port, enter 25565. Guess what? Internal port. Oh, that's the word port again. So we want 25565. There we go. Last but not least, our internal IP address is actually the IPv4 address we found earlier. So in my case, 192.168.1.2. You may have a list of devices on your network, all of them. That is a drop down, and you want to select your device from there if you have it. If you can't enter the IP address directly, we have it right here as well. So I have kind of both options there. But nevertheless, at this point, you're going to go ahead and apply and save your port forward, unless you need an external or outside IP address. If that's the case, we need to get our public IP. And luckily, so do you. Every single one of you who's watching this video needs your public IP, and in the description down below, you can find it here on our website. This is your public IP address. It just takes what your public IP is and gives it back to you, but it does show you some of the stuff that people can find out via your public IP, including your city, your state, and your latitude and longitude coordinates. So it's important that you only give this out to people you trust, and again, all of this is kept private at Simple Game Hosting. Your players cannot access this info if you get a server there. Then let's go ahead and click to copy your IP address if you need it. And again, everyone who's watching this needs it because this is how your friends are going to join your server. So go ahead and click to copy your IP address. If you needed it for your port forward, come back here, enter it in. If you didn't save your port forward, make sure you do that. Now we can join this server and our plugins will be on it and our friends can join this server as well. So let's go ahead and start the server. That's the first step coming in here and double clicking that run.bat file. 
and the server will start. I'm also going to launch up Minecraft and I will meet you on the main menu to join this server. So here we are on the Minecraft main menu. The server is started here, but I'll be honest, I've covered it up because my public IP address will show up here. We covered it up earlier as well, and that's because you don't want to give this out to anybody and everybody, but it's a lot easier to just use Minecraft to cover this up than it is to edit it and, and do it in editing. So that's why I like to do it like this, just in full disclosure. Now from here, we want to go to multiplayer, proceed, and add a server. The server name can be public IP because that's what we're going to be using to join and then paste this in. Again, you can only see 4.3 here because you don't want to give this out to everyone and then go ahead and click done. Now, this is the IP your friends will use to join, your public IP here. So make sure that's what you're giving them. You're the only person that can join via the local connection we did earlier. But now if we go ahead and double click on this public IP. It will let me join. You can see over here on the left that Nix Games has joined in. That's my username. Now, with that being said, you may not be able to join via your public IP and that's okay as long as your friends can join via your public IP. That's on the people that need to. You can join via that local connection while your friends are playing using your public IP. The reason you might not be able to join using your public IP is because some ISPs just simply don't allow it. As simple as that, you're connecting back to yourself and it's a little weird. Some ISPs don't allow that. So nevertheless, here we are in game. If we run that, uh, you know, like an essentials command, we'll be able to get it. That is assuming we op ourselves. So to do that, you want to come over here to the server console and you'll type op and then your username. I'm going to go ahead and do that real fast so I don't show my IP. There we go. I have now given myself op and we can use essentials. For example, we can do slash set spawn here. That's an essentials command. I can run over here and then do slash spawn and it will jump me back. So just an example that uh, sure enough, essentials is working. If you've got any questions, let us know in the comment section down below, but we also have a ton of different resources in the description down below. Specifically, you want to add more RAM to your server? We've got you covered right here. It is. You want to allow Java through your Windows Defender firewall? This is most likely why your friends wouldn't be able to join your server after port forwarding. It's probably Windows Defender blocking it and we have an in-depth guide in the description on exactly how to get that set up and working to where your friends can join your server and allow Java through Windows Defender. We also have this, a complete guide over 20 minutes fixing different Minecraft server issues. It can be super helpful to go through and go through this guide. Even if you're not having issues right now, it's good to know what could happen in this guide helps to discover those. So nevertheless, if you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below and be sure to give you a thumbs up and enjoy your Minecraft server with plugins. Again, if you want to add plugins, just add them to the plugins folder. It's that easy. And to get the plugins folder, you need a paper server. So that's why this video was so long. Basically, you got to get the paper server set up, allow your friends to join it and all that. And then you just add the plugins to your plugins folder and they work. We can see here with the plugins command. So there you have it. If you got any questions, let us know in the comment section down below and we'll see you in the next video. I am out. Peace.